Well, good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Malik Show. I am so glad that you all have decided to tune back in to see about little old me. But don't we have a show for you on tonight? But on tonight, not only we have uh, a great hot topics, we have an amazing special guest with us, DMV's own Sam Roberts. He is here with the Levites Assembly, which is known as Sam Roberts in L.A. They are here in the studio with us tonight, and we are looking for an amazing special, amazing interview and also some amazing singing, because you know one thing about me, I love some good singing and some good interviewing. But before we go into that, we have some hot topics that will disturb your ears on tonight. And starting with the first, now as we all know, these two ladies, we know them very well. They're sure not Dionne Warwick and Whitney Houston, but they are Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Now, as you all know that Cardi and Nicki has been beefing for so many, many, I'll say months, but just recently, as I have on here on tonight, they were doing a uh, event in New York, and I wish I had time to put the video out, but you all have seen it. Uh, obviously, they, there was some shoe throwing going on. So, ladies, as you may or may not watch this, but it will be on Instagram and Facebook, get it together, act your age, and stop acting like hoodlums. Anyway, moving on to the second segment of Hot Topics on tonight. Now, most of you that know me knows that I'm Kojic, born and raised to the bone, but tonight I have to say something about this gentleman right here. Not only that he is um, a good friend and a brother of mine, he's also known as the Bishop Daryl Lynn Hines. Uh, Bishop Hines is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, beautiful wife, uh, Pastor Pam Hines, uh, two uh, grown sons, uh, grandchildren, family man, businessman, and also he is a bishop. But on tonight, I have gotten some disturbing news uh, from uh, sources saying that Bishop Hines was allegedly in a scandal with a lady from Florida accusing him of adultery. Well, I'm going to say this on my show on tonight, and Bishop Hines, I'm sure you and your family will be watching because y'all do follow me on social media, but I want to say that woman is a liar. I don't believe it. I believe you're a true man of God, and I will personally will say I personally don't believe it. I believe you stand your ground and keep doing your thing, if anything. And I believe uh, sources say one of the general board members had got it leaked out where they're jealous of you, sir. So expect that. Bad dresser and preacher like yourself, come on. But you also um, got it going, so don't let that kind of stuff upset you. You have my full 100% support. And amen to that. Moving on. Tonight, we have the, our, one of DMV's very own. Um, I have, was introduced to this uh, gentleman um, back a month, a year or so ago. Um, I have been following his music. Not only that, uh, he has actually came to one of our church services and when I tell you he just blew the whole roof out we're gonna get into it tonight ladies and gentlemen I give you the very our very own one and only Sam Roberts what's up yes sir yes sir well Sam before we start the show on tonight let's say that the Malik show is not only a show for anything goes but we also love fashion and you know you're gonna have to give us some shoe cam on tonight if our if our producer could give us some shoe cam because you know me and you know what one thing about tonight we're dressed down we, we could have been suited and booted but like you know, let's just dress it down. But I am digging those shoes. Give us, give us some shoe cam. Come on. Yes, we need to see um, what he um, got on, because I'm telling you, when I when when he came in, ladies and gentlemen, I was like, wait a minute, now that's some shoes right there. I might need to, I might steal them all before the show off and go off tonight. Thank you, man. But um, Sam, could you tell us um, before we get on? 
tell us um, your output on fashion, and not only that, tell us about your style and them shiny shoes of glory. <laughs> um, I don't really see myself as a fashionable person, but I just try to always look classy, put together. I tell my choir all the time that we got to always look classy and put together because not only are we representing the ministry God gave us, but we're representing God. So even when I go to the store, if, if I'm in jeans and a T-shirt, I make sure my shirt is ironed. And, you know, you throw a little accent on the feet or something or, you know, wear a little graphic tee, something, and the, out, the outfit kind of comes together. But I don't have, like, a certain style. I, I can dress it up. I can dress it down. Um, but I do love being in suits because I love church. Oh, yes, don't we all love suits, don't we all? I just love them, too. But it's something about casual and stuff, so I got to say, you got to dig on the casual look. But tell us about them shoes, though, because I'm, I'm one thing about me, I, I just love flashy, flamboyant-type stuff. So give us some output on them shoes, and after the show, you can tell me where to go to buy them. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm a cheap person, so I shop on clearance all the time. I just happened to find some good stuff on clearance. Ain't that something? Man. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. But um, so these are from one of my favorite shoe stores, Aldo. All and, right. Um, Shout out Aldo. Yeah, I love it. I have like 20 pair of Aldo shoes. But <laughs> when I saw them, I'm not a flashy person. I'm very conservative. So I was kind of hesitant. But because I'm so conservative, I said, well, I, I can put a little sparkle somewhere. And so I bought the shoes and they've been a hit. Every, every time I wear them, people think that I got money, but I don't. But... <laughs> Well, it's all right to have a look some money. It's all right. It's all right. One day. Well, Sam, let's get right into the interview on tonight. Um, first of all, um, like I say, you are very well known. And I must say, for me, I was introduced to you. Um, we're going to get into it, but I was introduced to you through your music. And one of the spots was Choir Days. I know you know about Choir Days because it was be right at on Benning Road. At um, could you give us the name of the church? I keep forgetting. Gospel Ark. Gospel Ark. There we go. Um, I will. I think I went to a couple, but when you and your choir get up, y'all just steal the show. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that on tonight. But I want to talk a little bit about Sam, and you are a born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia. So if you could just give us a little bit of your childhood and how was life for you in your kid years? Okay. Yeah, I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. Um, which is like right across the bridge. Um, my home church is in Alexandria. Everybody had a funeral there, you know. So mm -hmm. in Alexandria, there's only one high school, TC, which, are, you know, they made the movie about the TC Titans. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody know everybody. So it was a very, very family-oriented uh, city. Uh, but once I got a little older, we moved to Woodbridge, you know, moved to the suburbs, and you go to the nice schools or whatever. But um, because my church was there, I've always been in Alexandria. That's, you know, every weekend, every Thursday night for choir rehearsal or whatever. I'm uh, the second oldest of four boys. My mother had four boys. Um, she wanted a girl, but oh well. And uh, <laughs> um, growing up, I was always the musical one, even though my brothers can sing, mm -hmm. but I was the one that was like, okay, you sing the top, you sing the middle, you sing, you know, like I was always organizing them and trying to get them to sing songs I wrote or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I even did that on the playground in school. It's just who I am. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, but I'm really quiet. I'm an introvert, but I'm, you know, I got a little smart mouth, a little slick mouth, so people like to oh, laugh at me. Oh, don't we all? I, don't we all? But, okay, so that's basically your Now, let me ask you this question. Let's talk about as far as when you graduated from high school. So let's, we're jumping from, like, your schooling, under your parents' roof, all of that. Let's talk about the next stages of life as far as once you graduated high school, did you attend like any college? Did you attend college or did you do like a music arts program? Okay. Well, I used to joke with my mother and tell her, you know, I said, Ma, we not broke, we financially retarded. And so <laughs> going to college and my family was not something that was the norm. So I did not go to college. Uh, I didn't even think about it, honestly. I had a good GPA in high school, but it was just, I was realistic. Like, you know, I'm not about to, you know, so um, I went straight into the workforce. I actually moved out and moved in with my godparents who were well off and they lived in Alexandria. So I moved back to Alexandria um, and started working for the police department in Fairfax. Mm -hmm. um, and about a, a year or so into living with my godparents, mm -hmm. <coughs> they said that they believed in my gift and that they would support me. I didn't have to work. They would support me until my ministry supported me. Mm -hmm. And so at that time I kind of stopped 
working and just focused on. I started my first group, uh, Sam Robinson Ministry. And uh, well, yeah. tell us a little bit about Sam Robinson Ministry. Tell us like what year and what did you do and all of that. Okay, so it was 2007. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had the crazy idea to start a group, and I told one of my friends who went to Howard University. He sung in the community choir. His name Corey, and so he said, "Hey, go to a rehearsal with me tonight." Mm -hmm. I just went to hang out, and as I was sitting in rehearsal, the Lord was drawing my attention to certain people. I don't know why. I never heard them sing by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I would ask my friend, hey, Corey, what about that person? And he looked at me. He said, Sam, something is very weird because you just picked out all of the section leaders. Like, without even knowing, you picked out all of the best singers. And as they were walking out, rehearsal was ending. I was like, I know you don't know me, but I got some songs. I was thinking about doing a record. Would you sing with me? And they all said yes. And we had our first rehearsal in February of 2007 and recorded in December 2000. Uh, seven. Yep. December wow. 15th. Okay, so as I am reading some of your bio, um, I want to talk about just a few things personally. Now, I'm going to read this, ladies and gentlemen. It says, respected singer, choir director, songwriter Sam Roberts, and his group, the Levites Assembly, are both proud and excited to travel the single, Reap Now. The song features chart topping, songwriter, producer Travis Malloy. We're going to talk about him as well. And is also available on digital platforms. This single is the first from their debut project are due to the release of summer of 2017. Sam Roberts and the Levites Assembly are based in Washington, D.C. and consist of an amazing group of talent musicians from various areas of the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Sam Roberts and the Levi Assemblies, affectionately known as L.A., was established in 2012 and has performed at Hezekiah Walker's Stella Awards sanctioned event, Choir Fest, sharing platforms with choir master Ricky Dillard, among others. They have participated in an all-state gospel superfest competition. They've also recorded live at T.D. Jake's Megafest International Choir Showcase in front of 7,000 attendees. Now, we're moving into another segment. Now... I want to talk about now the Levites Assembly, and I want to know first where did the name come from. I wanted to know where and when was it founded, and I also want to talk about as well um, what is your input on artists such as yourself starting groups, and what is the the trials and tribulations of it? Okay, the Levites Assembly was an idea that I'm going to say God gave me uh, while I was sitting in the house one day um, to get all of my friends who sang with other people or have been singing for years and had never really got past the local level. And I said, well, if there's strength in numbers, what if we all came together and recorded a pro recorded a project mm -hmm. and you know put all our put all our resources together, then maybe we could go further than we. Uh, ever did individually and so that's why I just called it the Levites assembly because I was assembling the Levites mm -hmm. and uh, LA kind of I don't know where that came from people just started calling us LA ago or something but um, so I reached out to like 50 people of my friends and they all said yes and of course by the time we actually <laughs> started um, singing it wasn't 50 of them but um, I just I just thank God that I had the hearts of people where I could join people from all because it's not just people from the DMV I have singers from different states and everything and mm -hmm. so God has really graced me to be like a platform where I can bring people that would have never met each other never would have sung together um, in one place and, and make something amazing okay well let's talk about if m our producer can go to a certain picture I'm sure she knows because I we got to talk about this next picture. Okay, let me move out the way. Let's talk about that. <laughs> that is Sam Roberts and the Levite Assembly billboard. Yes. We I see the Okay, if I can see correctly, we have the number 5 top gospel album, the number 17 and top Ooh, I can't even <laughs> We need some glasses to see this. <laughs> Number seven on, on Christian gospel. Okay, and then number 12, which is the top 
um, I believe, orchestra and gospel digital album. Christian and gospel. Christian and gospel. But that's just digital sales by itself. It's one of the 12. Okay. Well, let's talk about this success. Let's talk about, because you know what? I do have this album myself personally, and I enjoy it every time when I listen to it, along with, you know, other EMV artists, but you're one of the top ones Thank you. that I enjoy. Um, but I definitely want to talk about this success right here. Tell me when and how and how did you felt about it? Okay, I had a very clear plan um, about what to do to try to make my album a success. And so we did a three-month rollout, is what they call um, the marketing strategy before you release something. Mm -hmm. So I started um, the first week of July with a big release at my convocation, Bible Way. I'm a Bible Way boy for life. And well, so hold a pause <laughs> right there. Bible Way as in Washington, D.C. or New Jersey. That was the mother church, um, but in 86, the year I was born, we split. So it's two Bible Ways now, but okay. that's the mother church to everybody. So let me ask you this question about Bible Way. You must know the late Bishop Silvers. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, because we know a couple of the Bible Way saints, and I tell you, it, they, it just be straight church up in there. But you can go ahead. Yes, yeah, so, um, um, so I released it my birthday week at Convocation in 2017. And we did pre-sales, and then we started a tour called the Glory Tour. Mm -hmm. The album came out the last weekend of August, the same day as Tasha Cobb's album. Mm -hmm. um, Travis, M Travis Green's album had just came out the week before, mm -hmm. so I was very, very nervous because Tasha Cobb's is the Beyonce of gospel. Ah. So, you know, I was like, well, we're going to be whatever. I, I, chart position wasn't even my focus per se, but I just mm -hmm. knew I had to put in some work to make sure it wasn't just another album that just fell to the wayside. Okay. And so... We, we worked it, we toured, and people supported us like never. I don't know where they came from, but we um, were number five, as I said, uh, as the, the flyer said, number five in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis Green was right above us. Tasha was number one, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to see our name even in those, you know, with those people was with amazing. Those, I, I understand. Um, and my best friend Charles Butler was like, people are probably looking at the charts like, who is this Sam Roberts? You know, because we were number two on iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, we had pr surpassed Travis Green. So it was Tasha, then us, mm -hmm. and then Travis was under us. I was just in amazement. Okay. Well, let me ask you um, this next question. Um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the let's talk a little bit about the outreach. And I know, um, as you and I both know, names like Charles Butler and names like uh, Travis Malloy and also um, names like Jamel, Jarmel Evans, James Murphy. How did the connection, how did you all get connected and how is the relationship on today? Well, I've known most of them, especially Jarmel and James for a long, long time, like 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. So when Jarmel was hanging around Howard University and I was hanging around Howard University and we he used to, uh, his group used to sing every Wednesday at their Wednesday Night Live. And so since I had friends there, I would always be there, and we just kind of hit it off. Um, James as well. I think we sung at something together or something like that, or one of my friends introduced us, and we just kind of clicked, like, because we both crazy. And to this day, they're still my brothers. I support them 100%. Travis Malloy I met uh, about seven years ago, um, and that is my brother for life. And Charles Butler is my best best friend like we talk every day i don't like talking on the phone but charles butler is my best friend well here is this <laughs> and i'm gonna say this on the malik show charles uh we waiting on you so we got to get him i definitely uh, would love to have him to come on and do something on him because i definitely enjoy his music as well all y'all dmv saints i Thank love you. you yes indeed well 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 sam let's talk about personal life um let's talk about the groupies because you know <laughs> the one thing <laughs> one thing about it um in the church um you know, of course the world you know the world got artists such as Chris Brown got artists like uh Lloyd and uh Miguel and all of them but let's talk about as far as groupies now let's say do you have any of those problems and issues uh since you have started the assembly Oh man, or I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't call them groupies. That's weird to say. Or even just the ones that just, uh, you know, 
They as soon as church is over, as soon as a concert is over, they be oh, you you know how it be. You know, I think it's just the culture of church. I don't think it has, <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with me being in music ministry because I think the preachers get it, and you know, I mean, honestly, well, I would say uh, definitely now, um, now that especially artists like you know such as yourself and Charles Butler and some others, uh, Sean Tillery and all, you know, y'all guys are out there, DMV known, so of course y'all gonna have people running up to you. Yes, can I get a picture? Yes, uh, I like your music, or yes, um, you know, I wanna be a part of this music, so tell me. I, d- I do get that, which is really surprising. And like I said, I have singers from all over the country now, and for them to tell me, I think one time we went to Dallas, and we were all talking about how people are like recognizing us, but not just in DC, it's around the country, like, wait, you sing with, LA like so it, it is kind of weird you got to adjust to it um, I'm not really a people person like off the bat I'm an introvert but I love people I'm very very honored that people even know who I am but it can get kind of weird sometimes which is, I'm <laughs> is what you're trying to get at yeah they do be trying it sometimes um, and they don't take no event either they just be trying it you post a good picture and then oh, there we go well if our producer can post another picture that I want to talk about on tonight and um, well, we're gonna t- well, that's gonna be on our second show, but it's an it's another single. It's a single of um, Sam and there we go. Re- now, Maxine Waters has reclaiming my time, but Sam Roberts has reap now. So let's talk about reap now. Um, and I believe that's an album, or that's it's a, a single. It's from a the single, album. but I know that that single has became very popular. So let's talk about Reap now, where and how. Okay, uh, I wrote the song because I was discouraged. You know, I'm I'm a good guy. I'm nice to everybody. I try to be, you know, I give everybody rides, lend money, and it just felt like I was getting stomped all over. And when I needed something, it was nobody there for me. And it was kind of discouraging. So I went to the word of God and I said, how can I articulate this to help somebody else? Um, and so God led me to the scripture, be not weary in well-doing, uh, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And that's what encouraged me. So I wanted to encourage everybody else that heard the song, um, which I didn't know was going to be as many people as it is now. But when I wrote it, I just wanted somebody else like me to know that the return on what you put out um, comes from God and not from people. So you can get disappointed by people, but not disappointed by God. Mm-hmm. And so that's what Reap Now is all about. And now we are 50,000 streams in and you know, a <laughs> couple hundred sales of the single by itself. Um, and it, it's also one of the top sellers on the record, too, as well. That's awesome. Well, we're five minutes into our show, but definitely, ladies and gentlemen, on our next episode of The Malik Show, we will have Sam with us again. But we are going to talk more about the Levites Assembly. And um, personally, Sam, um, now that I got you on live, we had a discussion about the Levites Assembly. So we're going to say that. And also... We have the Levites, some of them in our studio right now, and they're going to give us, they're going to bless our souls. So I'm looking forward to all of that on our next episode of the Malik Show. But, Sam, we're four minutes, so this is um, my next question, and I definitely want you to take as much time as you can to answer this next question. Um, Where do you see yourself with this whole just uh, success in the next 10 years, at least the next 10 years, because, you know, uh, we have groups that break up. We have artists that be like, you know what, Um, some retire, you know, some, you know, I never heard of none giving up. But where do you see yourself taking this within the next 10 years? That's a very good question. And I'm going to be honest and say I have no idea. (laughs) And <laughs> because I did just come out of a season where I gave up. And so at this point, um, the Lord told me, you know, this time you got to do it with me. Let me lead. And so I'm trying to be slow. I'm, I'm an I'm a overthinker by nature. I'm a hard worker. I, like, once I got an idea, I'm about to drive that thing until it's done. But now I'm, I got to learn how to just wait on God for instructions. So I don't have an answer to that except whatever God tell me to do, I'm going to do it. And I know that uh, since God is leading, it's going to be better than what I could ever imagine. Awesome. 
Well, definitely on the next episode, we're going to have all of the Levites that's presently with us on the next episode. And I'm definitely going to be interviewing them as well and also getting their feedback on their experience as well with the um, with the group. Now, with three minutes in, now let me ask this next question. Um, let's talk about, well, might as well go ahead and put it out there. Let, you, we talked and you had said you kind of given up just a little. You kind of gave everything up. Is there like a reason why you did that? And it it is a reason, yeah. Um, I was tired. I'm I'm a I'm a church boy. All I know is serving in ministry. That's my whole life. I ain't no vacations, no you know. So my life was unbalanced. And I, like I said, I'm such a hard worker and overthinker. It was kind of I was drowning. Um, even even with the success, it was kind of drowning me. As well as I was kind of frustrated because we were a success in the public eye, mm -hmm. but it was like so hard behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I just, it, the, the, the contrast of it was driving me crazy. And I didn't want to become a bitter leader. I didn't want to become a bitter artist. And I definitely didn't want to get further in the industry and then the group falls apart or something blows up mm -hmm. and in front of a bigger audience. So I just decided to step down and disband it, um, which is what I thought was the right thing to do at the time. Um, but God had another way. Okay. Well, that was something that I never heard before, but I definitely can understand where and how it can go. But ladies and gentlemen, viewers of the Malik Show, I thank you all for tuning in on tonight. This has been an awesome interview with you, Sam. And ladies and gentlemen, I definitely want you to come back for part two. Um, the Levites Assembly, some of the Levites will be on the Malik show on this platform, and I definitely would love to. I'll be getting an interview with all of them, and we're going to hear some good singing on, on, on the next episode. We're going to bless ourselves. And, Sam, I know you got a voice, so as we close out, bless us with a little something to close us out on this uh, episode of the Malik show. Thank you all for watching. I am Malik Shabazz Sullivan, your host, and now I turn everything over to the one and only Sam Roberts. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, what would I sing in church? Uh, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And I won't, I won't complain. That does it, folks. Thanks for watching The Malik Show. I'm your host, Malik Shabazz Sullivan. Tune in next time for part two.